been uh, continuously improving the supporting aspect such as regulation, facilities, financial system, bureaucracy management, information system, as well as quality of human resources, quality escalation of three dharma perspective. As a primary target of women, by stimulating the downstream of research outcomes that can be beneficially implemented for the society. We are also keen to improve the quantity of national and international academic publication, as well as the number of doctorates and professors in Diponegoro University. Now, Diponegoro University has been improving in two important aspects of achievement, institutionally and student achievement. Diponagoro University has become a world-class university by being ranked fifth amongst almost 5,000 universities in Indonesia. Meanwhile, the students' achievement in both national and international scales of prestigious events are increasing. <laughs> vision to be an imminent research university is supported by the continued increase of research funding. The total research and civil service funding in 2018 is 123.7 billion rupiah. It consists of PMVP, the National Competition Research Funding, and Collaboration Research Funding. intellectual property right becomes the indicator of significantly improved research. The patent consists of simple patent, patent, international patent, software and invention legal letter. To support the academic process, the Ponagora University has been improving the student facilities. Thus, the students will not only get the knowledge but also the actualization space.
Pole Godo University has been moving ahead to be the best university in Indonesia by providing 13 faculties of undergraduate and postgraduate. The Pone Godo University has graduated 300,000 qualified alumni. The Pone Godo University also establishes vocational schools to generate a ready-to-work alumni. Holding the fighting values of Pangaran di Panagoro, such as honest, brave, fair, and attentive, the Panagoro University keeps producing excellent alumnus nationally and internationally, while also contributing in the development of knowledge, technology, art, culture, and exercise. continuously improving the supporting aspect such as regulation, facilities, financial system, bureaucracy management, information system, as well as quality of human resources, quality escalation of three Dharma perspective is the primary target by stimulating the downstream of research outcomes that can be beneficially implemented for the society. We are also keen to improve the quantity of national and international academic publication, as well as the number of doctorates and professors in Diponegoro University. Now, Diponegoro University has been improving in two important aspects of achievement institutionally and student achievement. Diponegoro University has become a world-class university by being ranked fifth amongst almost 5,000 universities in Indonesia. Meanwhile, the students' achievement in both national and international scales of prestigious events are increasing. <laughs> vision to be an imminent research university is supported by the continued increase of research funding. The total research and civil service funding in 2018 is 123.7 billion rupiah. It consists of PMBP, the National Competition Research Funding, and Collaboration Research Funding. intellectual property right becomes the indicator of significantly improved research. The patent consists of simple patent, patent, international patent, software and invention legal letter. To support the academic process, the Ponegoro University has been improving the student facilities. Thus, the students will not only get the knowledge but also the actualization space. Baik, Pak Untung, uh, mohon izin untuk kita memulai saja ya, Pak. Halo, ya, Pak Untung. Ya, Bu, Bu Dian, monggo ya, uh, dikoordinasikan dengan panitia. Ya, Bu Titin dan Bu Moga, kita bisa mulai. Bu Titin. Oke, okay. 
ditanya. Oke. Okay. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Respectable, the head of nursing department, faculty of medicine, Universitas Diponegoro, Dr. Untung Sujianto, SKP MKES. Honorable, the head of nursing master study program, Dr. Mediana Dwidianti, SKP MSJ, along with the ranks. Honorable, the head of nursing bachelor program, Bapak Agus Santoso, MKES, along with the ranks. Honorable. The head of nurse profession study program, Nurse Artika Nurahima Eskap MK. Honorable all lecturers in nursing department faculty of medicine, Universitas Diponegoro, and other lecturers from any other nursing school or head science institute. Honorable all the participants Nurses, master students of nursing, bachelor program student of nursing, and all invited guests. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon and best wishes to all of you. First of all, let's praise our God Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Tuhan yang Maha Esa, the most gracious, the most merciful, the Creator and Sustainer of the universe. Salawat serta salam sejak senantiasa tercurah kepada junjungan kita Nabi Muhammad Shallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yang telah membawa umatnya dari kerusakan menuju kebenaran yang senantiasa kita harapkan syafaatnya kelak di Yaumil Akhir. Silakan Mbak, silakan Mbak, diambil Mbak. Silakan, Mbak. Welcome Tanda. to all participants from all over Indonesia. It's our pleasure to have all of you in this virtual seminar in the form of general lectures with the theme nursing theory application. We are really appreciate you taking some time out of your day today to learn a little bit more about implementation of family assessment and intervention model in education, practice, and research. So we are really excited you could, you could all join us and hope you enjoy the virtual seminar. My name is Dianyuli Wijayanti. It is an awesome and precious chance for me to be your master of ceremony in this visiting professor program of World Class University, Universitas Diponegoro on Thursday, 15th October, 2020. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, before we start our virtual general lecture for today, I will read you for the agenda. First is opening. The opening will we will hear the national anthem of Indonesia Raya and Undip Mars song. After that, there will be a speech from the head of nursing department, Universitas Diponegoro, Bapak Dr. Untung Sujianto. Next agenda will be the main agenda for today. There is presentation about implementation of family assessment and intervention model in education, practice, and research. We have a wonderful speaker today. We have Associate Professor Dr. Christina Garcia Viver. She is from the Department of Health Science and Nursing Faculty of Health Science of the Public University of Navarra, Spain. Welcome to Dr. Gracia Pifar. Further introduction will be delivered by moderator who will facilitate the discussion session. So today's virtual general lectures is going to run about two hours along with the discussion session and closing. And then I will also read some rules in participating to this virtual general lectures. First, 
please use your real name for a Zoom application account so that we don't have wrong identification in admitting the participant. Second, participants should mute the microphone while joining this virtual general lecture. Third, participant must fill the attendee list prepared by the committee. As you can see, a fourth participant should ask the question on the room chat board or raise hand for directly asking question to the speaker. Fifth, participant can assess and download a certificate on web shared by the committee. We will have a recording of the virtual general lecture available to everyone to review. So if you registered for this virtual general lecture or if you have friends who wanted to participate this event but were not able to make it, we will send along a link to the recorded person and then you are welcome to share the link with any friends and we will also post on our website so that you can access easily as well. Bapak Ibu sekalian sebelum kita mulai acara ini marilah kita membaca basmalah bersama. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ladies and gentlemen, now we will hear the national anthem of Indonesia Raya and continued by Undip Mars song. Please. Bapak Ibu sekalian, sebelum kita mulai acara ini, marilah kita membaca basmalah bersama. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ladies and
sounds, I think. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, step on to the following agenda is speech. The first and the only speech is welcoming speech for, from the head of nursing department uh, Universitas Diponegoro, Bapak Dr. Untung Sujianto SKP MKES. And we would like to ask Dr. Untung to open officially this virtual general lecture at once. Dr. Untung, time is yours. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Associate Professor Dr. Christina Garcia Viva. Peace of all, as thank God for the blessing of life and knowledge for us together in this meaningful occasion. It is a good pleasure and honor for our school to organize a series of virtual general lecture under the program of a world-class university, Universitas Diponegoro. On behalf of the rector of Universitas Diponegoro, for the special announcement I address to the distinguished speaker today, Associate Professor Dr. Christina Garcia Vivar from the Faculty of Health Science, Public University of Navarra, Spain. She will share the nursing knowledge about implementing family assessment and intervention model in education, practice, and research today. 15 October 2020 and grounded theory in nursing research tomorrow and 5, 6 October 2020. Thank you very much for the valuable time to deliver knowledge and share scientific information at this event. We will also have another speaker from the Faculty of Nursing, Prince of Songla University Italian, Associate Prof. Dr. Panit Songwatana on 14 November 2020 talk about recent publication. So I hope the everyone could be present to join these two great speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, this webinar is a part of the world-class professor program organized by Universitas Diponegoro. The program aims to provide to students, faculty, nurses, and other interest attendant knowledge and insight into nursing theory and practice and publication. The program is in line with the vision and mission of Universitas Diponegoro to become a research university. And the vision and mission of Department of Nursing to be a professional, excellent, innovative and comprehensive center of nursing education. This opportunity will provide valuable information for us and deliberate new insight and research for ideas for all participants. I am grateful to see that this webinar has a normal response from the participants. I sincerely express appreciation to the organized committee for this effort to realize this webinar and all the people involved in the arrangement of this webinar. Therefore, I would like to confide the warmest welcome to all the distinguished speaker and webinar participants. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much uh, for the speech, Dr. Untung. What's an uh, enlightening speech? I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, hope that we can achieve the goal of becoming a research university and specifically achieve the aim of this program that is provide knowledge and insight of nursing theories and practices as well as publication. I mean, well, ladies and gentlemen, now 
we will start our session on general lecture with the topic implementation of family assessment and intervention model in education practice and research without any further ado we would like to welcome associate professor dr christina garcia vivar and this session will be moderated by Mega Andriani, PhD, the Secretary of Master Study Program, uh, Nursing Department, Universitas Diponegoro. She is also our lecturer in Nursing Department since 21. I can see you here. Yes, Mrs. Mega Andriani PhD lives on Jati Barat Street, Banyumanik, Semarang. She graduated Bachelor of Nursing Science from Faculty of uh, Nursing, University of Indonesia, Jakarta in 2001. She graduated Master of Nursing in 2008, also from Faculty of Nursing, University of Indonesia, Jakarta. Graduated Community Health Nursing Specialist Program in 2009 from University of Indonesia as well. And she completed doctoral program in nursing from Faculty of Nursing Friends of Songla University, Thailand in 2019. She has been followed many trainings such as home care nursing training, training of trainers for the care and of tuberculosis, distance learning training, certified wound care clinical training. She has come, she has some topics of interest too. Among them are TB care, correctional nursing, wound care, spiritual and family nursing. So she is very concerned in family nursing, very related to today's topic. So I think is the right person in guiding the session to Mrs. Megandriani, PhD. Okay, thank you, Ibu Dian. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, we are so grateful today to have Associate Professor Dr. Christina. Today, she will uh, expert, uh, share her expertise in family nursing today and ground it theory tomorrow. Uh, so before I read uh, her curriculum field, eh, let me say hello to Dr. Christina. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Uh, it's nice to meet you directly in this virtual session. You also look beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and uh, I would like to introduce our audience. Uh, there are students and lecturers, and one uh, from abroad, from Palestine. Uh, she works here. Yes, and first of all, uh, let me introduce our great speaker today. Okay, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Christina Garcia Fifar. I hope uh, I don't make any mistake in pronunciation in Spain. <laughs> she got uh, her uh, uh, Bachelor of Science in Nursing in 20, uh, 2000 in University of Navarra, Spain, and her Master of Science and PhD in Nursing Science from the University of Edinburgh, uh, Scotland. She is uh, currently Senior Associate Professor, uh, Associate Director of the Department of Health Sciences and Nursing Coordinator of Inter International Affairs at the Faculty of Health Sciences of the Public Health University of Navarra, Spain. She served as Board of Directors of the, the International Family Nursing Association since 2015. 
Her research focuses on uh, promoting uh, the health families in living with chronic illnesses, illness, particularly the family experience of cancer survivorship and improving knowledge translation of family system nursing practice. She is also interested in promoting efficient and holistic nursing care in primary health care. So if any audience here have similar topics of interest, it is a big opportunity to make a joint activities with her. Uh, Dr. Christina's teaching areas in the degree of Bachelor and Master of Nursing Science, including a subject of family and community nursing, the family as the unit of care, advanced nursing role, qualitative research, and nursing research. She has published 68 articles in national and international journals, three books and six, uh, sorry, nine books chapters, 120 presentations at national and international conferences and seminars. She is also members of various national and European research groups. And uh, she got many grants also members of the editorial and scientific committee and national and international journals. As we got uh, some achievements, including 2000, 2015 innovative contribution of two family nursing awards awarded by the International Family Nursing Associations for her contribution to the transformation and achievement to advancement of the health uh, of family and award to the best poster title of family intervention training program for nurse practitioners study protocol in the conference, the family health, uh, the family health nursing in European uh, communities. And that's all the brief curriculum vitae of Dr. Christina. So next, uh, I would like to explain our rules in this session. Dr. Christina will provide her lecture around one hour and 30 minutes and continue with a discussion sessions around 30 minutes. For audience who wants to deliver questions directly can raise hand and I will let you to directly convey your uh, questions to our speaker today. Or you can write down your question in chat room and I will de deliver it into Dr. Uh, Christina. Don't worry if you don't want to, if you want to ask in Bahasa Indonesia, it's okay. <laughs> and I will translate uh, it. Dr. Christina will provide a lecture about the implementation of Calgary Family Assessment and inter Intervention Model in Family Nursing in Education, Practice and Research. This will be be an interesting topic for us since this model is not as familiar as Friedman family assessment model that is uh, mostly used in Indonesia. So, okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we are ready to get more knowledge from Dr. Christina. And Dr. Christina, time is yours. Okay. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, clearly. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will try to share my screen. Let's see. Um, so you can see my PowerPoint, I hope. Okay, is it okay? Can you follow the presentation? Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, first of all, I would like to have to give you a big thank you for this very warm uh, invitation. I'm really, really happy to share with you uh, this um, presentation and to know more about your context, about your experience in Indonesia. I would like to, to thank you, the head of the nursing department of, the, of nursing uh, at the Universitat de Go Nepero. I don't know if the, my my uh, I did I, I say I say uh, in a good word because uh, you know you mentioned that 
uh, if you you follow my my Spanish name and it was perfect you did it very well but I will try to speak slowly so you can uh, follow me you know my, my first language is not English it's Spanish um, and uh, well let's let's go uh, I would also thank you uh, Dr. Mega because she contacted me and, and when I received her email I was very happy to, to know her, to meet her. I think it's an opportunity um, to continue doing uh, common works with uh, your university, your department, all your students and faculty. I could follow the video uh, from your university and it's amazing. You are one of the most important in, the can in, in your country and your area and I could see that research is very important for you and it's a key priority. Uh, so uh, my belief is this for nursing, research in nursing and promoting research uh, in nursing is really, really important worldwide. So, so thank you again for this kind invitation and please let me know if um, you can follow me in a proper way because we will be for two hours together and um, so I hope uh, we will uh, enjoy uh, and learn together. So when, when Mega invited me to give this presentation, the title was the one that you can see in the screen is Implementation of Calgary Family Assessment and Intervention Model in Family Nursing, Education, Practice and Research. I have to say that this a big topic, but let's see uh, how we will in two hours um, focus on that. First of all, um, I would like, oops, sorry, I would like to, to show you where I am from. So we, we are, you know, far away from Spain and Indonesia, the University of Leoponegoro and my university, the Public University of Navarra. But uh, I think that distance are not too much because now we are together with this uh, video conference. My, my university is, is located in Pamplona, which is a charming little town near the, the Pyrenees, near the mountains you know, between Spain and France. And, uh, and um, we do have two universities. And so this means that the, the, the city is a very young and dynamic city because it's a small um, city with two universities. So we do have many international students. Therefore, you are more than welcome to come to Pamplona and, and to my university and to also enjoy, you may have seen in the, in the TV this crazy, you know, party the, with bullfight uh, in the street and everybody running, crazy people running in the street. But it's a, a very international uh, city because we do have people from all over the world coming to this popular um, party or, or, you know, event in Spain. So again, welcome to that. Saying that, my presentation will focus on the following. I have tried to, to, to focus, well, to, to give response to the title and to the topic that I was given by, by your colleague, Mega. And I found this was a good way to uh, divide the presentation. First, I will present briefly what is family and family nursing. Second, I will continue uh, presenting briefly because in one hour and a half, you know, we don't have enough time. Usually with my master and PhD student, I pay a whole course about family assessment and intervention. Therefore, I will give the main, um, the main ideas that I think are important. Third, I will share with you some experiences of implementation of family nurses in three different countries, the one that I know more. And finally, I want to share with you some challenges and opportunities we have 
to implement family nursing in our country, in our region and worldwide. So let's start with the family and family nursing meaning and definitions. Of course, who is a family is very difficult to define because there is no a unique definition of family. I think it depends first of the culture, of the context, and also of the disciplines. Because, you know, usually we work in an inter interdisciplinary way, and I had the, the chance to know how lawyers think about what is family, how sociology thinks what is family, and also what health science doctors, nurses, psychologists think about, about family and, and the meaning of family. But in this case, I will focus on, on the meaning of family in a broader way and, and from a health perspective, because this is our interest, um, I, I assume. So according to Dr. Wright and Lehi, two Canadian family nurses, very well known, and I'm sure you, you all have read something about, about them, they define the family as who they say they are. And this is really important, not only for practice, because it gives a wider perspective of family and family members, but also for research, including family and family members who feel are part of the unit. It's really important, again, when we do practice, nursing practice, and also when we do research. All other authors, um, well, also write, and also Janice Bell, who is the, the Journal of Family Nursing Editors, um, they define family as a group of individuals who are bound by strong emotional ties, a sense of belonging, and a passion for being involved in one another's lives. And this is, I really like this definition because it gives a sense of the importance of connections, of interrelationship and emotional issues within the unit of a family. In terms of health, this aspect of being part of a unit and, and having emotional ties is important because when a diagnosis um, of any disease, any chronic disease, such as cancer, cardiovascular disease, well, any type of disease, when, we, when a patient is diagnosed, the, the whole family is affected. And, and we will see that, or I will try to show you my view on that. And, and why did they say that when a patient is diagnosed with a health problem, the whole family is affected? Because first I assume, and, and this is my belief, that illness, it's a family affair. Um, it's a shame that I'm not there to, to know more about your culture. Maybe in the future we can have the opportunity, but it's really interesting to, to share and to know how each culture and each country uh, live and experience the family. But in general, I would say that universally, illness is a family affair. And this is because the family is as a system, as a unit. And, and the picture that I show you in the screen, try to, to um, present, to demonstrate the connections between uh, the different person and the different family members. And in relation to that, uh, I, I took this, uh, this sentence, this, um, from uh, Janice Bell Twitter. I think it was two years ago, but I love it. And I really believe that this is true. And she said that the patient is only half of the patient because the other half is the family. So this, this metaphor is really important when we care in practice for, for, for a patient um, or when we want to know more about how a person and a family are living with a particular disease or particular process of health. And uh, in, in saying that, I would like to, to invite you to, to look at this 
two great position statement on competencies for family nursing practice and, and advanced and generalist uh, practice working with families because um, well, this was, was developed by members from the International Family Nursing Association. I also had the privilege to be part of this uh, work um, committee. And it has an international view of how it is important and what are the competencies to work with families in practice. And all this is because um, I, be, I believe that nowadays, in general, uh, and this is some discussion that we have the colleagues uh, in the what I call the family tri tribe, the family unit uh, of international uh, colleagues, that the health system, and I would also say the education and research is very much focused on individual on an individual perspective and on a disease perspective a disease focused approach and my aim is that in the present but especially in the future we 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 move towards a paradigm of family focused care and i will try to explain why why it's important to to move toward this paradigm in education in research and in practice I think there is a need of this family-focused approach, let's say family nursing, there are different terms, um, but at, this, at the end, all are saying the, the, same, um, the same characteristics. So first, the families affect the health of individual members and vice versa, because as we mentioned before, illness is a suffering, uh, sorry, illness suffering is a family affair. So when a patient is diagnosed of any kind of health problems, the rest of the, of the family is affected and each member experience and lead the experience in a, in a specific way. Also, there is a need to change this focus because we have knowledge and research that says that healthcare effectiveness is improved when we have a, a, a family approach. And also taking into account the, the importance of society and having healthy families in society, the promotion and maintenance and restoration of health is important to contribute to healthy families and healthy societies. I know that today we are living a, a global pandemic situation. Uh, we have experienced, I suppose, all of us about how it has impacted in our life, in our family life, in our um, work life, everywhere. It has a global impact. Uh, and uh, families in this case also are suffering uh, uh, a lot. So what are the disciplines that can help to have this, this move towards a family focus. There are many health disciplines. Of course, we will focus on the family nursing because this is my area of expertise, but I do work with other colleagues from medicine, from psychology, who also think that this is important. So what is family nursing? Uh, different authors such as Dehan, Friedman, and Wright and Lehi that I have already presented to you, uh, describe family nursing as the integration or nurse of nursing care to family as a whole and individual family members uh, among, sorry, with attention to relationships among members. So at the end is a specific way of nursing care that pay attention to both the patient, the family members and the family as a unit. Sorry. What can we say about what are the aim of family nursing? Well, there are different, uh, and, but the most important are first to identify nursing needs and problems of each family, how they are 
experiencing a specific health problem, how they are coping with this situation, how nurses can help the families to, to support and to manage the new situation. Also to ensure families understanding and acceptance of those needs, to plan and provide health and nursing services with active participation of family members. So this is really important to uh, involve the families uh, in, the, in the care. And we'll show you later on some uh, experiences of research um, uh, that evidence the specific participation of family member and the connection with satisfaction of care. To help families develop abilities to deal with their health needs independently, so to help to, to, to um, cope with the specific needs, and also to contribute to families' performance of development functions and activities. Each family has its function, its way of working, of living, and um, and uh, so it is, it is a way of helping them to function in a proper way. And, and why do we have to, to, or why family nursing has an impact on, on families? Because first, we have one option, and we know that the lack of a family approach has consequences for patient and family members, is what we call family suffering. And on the other hand, we can have this positive aspect of, of the family, uh, saying that a family, uh, sorry, that a family has a positive impact on, on, on health. And I show you these pictures from, uh, I love, you will see my presentation that I love sculpture and I like also painting. So I, I use a lot of this painting with my students as a metaphor, uh, so to show uh, emotions uh, through these uh, art um, examples. So what is the benefit? We do have research and evidence showing that having a family perspective and having a family approach, a family nursing care has an impact on family nursing. And this is a meta-analysis on different studies that show psychosocial intervention for chronic illness. And in this research, the authors focus on different patient outcomes such as depression, anxiety, relationship satisfaction, disability, mortality. And for family members, the, 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 same, um, the same outcomes in addition to caregiver burden. So they ask themselves, is it beneficial to involve family member? And the conclusion was clear. Interventions that include a patient and a family member improve the depression of both the patient and family. And also it reduced the burden of care and, and anxiety within family. So as nurses, we, uh, we uh, aim to improve quality of care and well-being of individuals. And so involving families shows that we do improve this well-being. Another research um, conducted in, uh, in England and that explored the impact of implementing a family-centered care approach within an adult cardiac work show that also family participation in care and, and collaborative work between the family members and the, and the professionals. So this, this combination of, of, um, of alliance, of work together, increases satisfaction with care. Also, uh, this is just examples. I'm not going to show you all the evidence, but I think it, you can see in the different context. This is a, a research conducted in Iceland by my colleague uh, Erla Svadlatotti. And um, they conducted, uh, well, they implemented a project uh, to, to, um, to include family nursing in the whole hospital that I will show you later. And from this project, different articles and different contributions were 
were presented. And this is one in relation to families of children and adolescents in active cancer treatment. So we have evidence that family interventions are beneficial too in order to improve suffering of cancer patients because it, family nursing promotes communication within the members, it promotes uh, skills to deal with the new situation, in this case, active cancer treatments, and so the benefits are great. Therefore, taking into account that the benefits are high, it is important to train in family nursing because we also have some evidence that uh, when students, both in, in, in undergraduate level, also in master level, and I know that you, many of, of you listen listening today to me, you are students. So we know that when we educate in this family nursing perspective, you have more leadership, you enjoy greater your job, and you have confidence in approaching families. And this is really what I feel when, when I teach my students and when they, they finish their career and then go to practice and practice with families. They, they, they show greater leaderships and greater job satisfaction. Therefore, it is really important to, 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 uh, to have this family approach in education, in practice, and, and in research, as we have seen. So having this, this general framework of what is family and family nursing, I would like now to share with you some aspect of a specific model, which is the Calgary Family Assessment and Intervention Model. But you have to know that there are different models for family nursing. The most recognized internationally are the, these four ones that were recognized in 2001 by the International Council of Nursing. So it's the McGill um, model, which is based on Canada, the Friedman model, the WHO model, and then the Calgary one. I'm not going to focus on each of one because, of course, it's not my aim. I will focus on the Calgary first because you asked me for that, but also because this model is uh, probably one of the most used and implementing worldwide. This model was developed in the early 80s by Dr. Lauren White, who is in the center of the picture. Maureen Lehi, uh, who, who, well, both, well, the three of them are from Canada. Uh, Maureen Lehi, she's a mental health nurse who works uh, with families and who, well, now she's retired, but she, she, she did a great job in the mental health arena and field. Dr. Lauren Wright, she's um, a family therapist and, and also she focused on chronic illness and now she's the ambassador for family nursing worldwide and she gives uh, many lectures internationally and she, both of them are the, the, the ambassador for the Calgary family nursing model. And then Janice Bell, who is here, is the editor of Journal of Family Nursing. And she worked very closely with Dr. Wright and developed an, a different models, such as the, the Billy family models, which is an advanced level of, of family nursing practice. Um, so the three of them work together in this, in this uh, family nursing approach. So I was saying that, yes, uh, this Calgary model, I like it because it's the most disseminated in the world and also practice in different, uh, dis uh, not disciplines, but nursing area, such as pediatrics, mental health, geriatrics, cancer, and the different chronic illness such as dementia, etc. Is it hi, can you hear me properly? 
Iya, yeah, iya. Yeah. Please the audience, please the audience, uh, please uh, mute your microphone, please. Okay. Okay. Great. I can see some smile, so that's very good. <laughs> Then, so let's let's move on on describing briefly what is this model, and I invite you to 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 visit this book, Nurses and Families, A Guide to Family Assessment and Intervention. This is a book that I also have for my students and it has many editions and it describes very, very, very closely what, what is the Calgary uh, Family Assessment and Intervention Model. But let, let me move to the, the specific premises of this model. Uh, and the assessment model, because when we work with the family, we have to assess the situation, the family needs, and also then uh, after having the information to intervene. And these premises are very important when we work or do research family. First is that uh, this model is based on a relation of empowerment to the family. So the family is the, the center of the care. And that's why also the focus is on family strength, to try to identify their, their, their strength, their ability to, uh, to find solutions. So to the positive aspect of the families. Sometimes when a family is living with this particular health, problem they 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 do not see like they are capable to to solve the situation so the the model helped to identify this family strength and support them to to help in this trajectory of of the the disease or the the, the illness Another important promise is that assessment and intervention are at the same time. They are simultaneously. Of course, we have to start with assessment and we have to intervene, but the combination are throughout the, the, the care. For the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to divide first the assessment and then the intervention so we can have a clear view of the model. And then an important point and, and premises, so how to, to see this model is that communication is, is based on a therapeutic alliance in which relationship is based on symmetry and complementarity. Therefore, when we care for families, patient, family members, the family as a whole, The professional is not here and the families are here. So we are at the same level and we work together to try to um, identify strength and to solve uh, and help the family to discover the way of living and adapting, managing a situation. And this is really important. I, I, I have to say that these premises, I also use them for my role as educator you know when i'm with the students i like to be with the students and speak together how to uh, advance in 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 the, in the different situation so empowerment family strength and therapeutic alliance are very very important and maybe this is something that is you know of course this is important but i i highlight it because This is in theory, sometimes in practice is not so clear. You know, when we, we, we see uh, the, the health system and how professionals in general, not only nurses, but, but also other professionals work, sometimes it's not so clear this therapeutic alliance and, and, and you know, being at the same level together working for a specific aim. So this is the, the schema, the, the, the structure of the, the assessment model. So the, the focus is on family dynamics. We want to identify how a family react, how is the family dynamics 
functions, how the families are related to uh, each other, and also how is the structure. And that's why the, the family assessment model is divided in, in what we call the structural, the developmental, and the functional areas, which at the same time, they are divided in different subcategories and items to be assessed. Of course, there are many items uh, to be assessed, uh, but what is important is to that nurses prioritize and identify what is the most important to assess when uh, we are with the family. So the family assessment structural area means who is who in the family? Who is the father? How is the, 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 the parental role, the, the children's role? And, and uh, so who is who in the family? I will show you later with, with a genogram, an instrument that show the different roles and, and perspectives in the family. And within this, this structural uh, area, there are the internal, external, and context. And with this item for assessment, like the family composition, the gender, the sexual orientation, the rank order, the subsystem of parents, children, or, the, the, or extended families, boundaries, extended family, larger system, and the context, what kind of ethnicity has this family, the race, the social class, religion or spirituality, and the environment of the family. The second big area to assess is the development uh, area, which means in which family step the family is living. That is, it's not the same a young family with young children, that elder, that an elderly family, um, that probably the parents are alone because the, the, the children have gone to their own families and construct their own families. And this development phase each family stage task and achievements according to the, 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 the life stage that a family is located. And fin finally, the functional part, which relate to how the family communicate and how are the, the, the specific activity in, in their daily life. So an important point with that is because when I, when I teach that to nurses or to practitioners, they ask me that, Christina, do I have to assess all this area and items? This is impossible in practice. So my answer always is a good nurse, and that's why we are prepared and we are competent, have, has to, to prioritize and, um, and to decide what is the most important to assess with a particular family. Of course, if we have 10 minutes, it's impossible to assess all these items. So probably we will focus on the structure and communication of the family. If we have a, a consultation of one hour with the family, probably we will have a more complete assessment. But in general and in practice, uh, in a bedside situation, with the nurse working with families in a cardiac unit, in a cancer unit, the most uh, used assessment item, as I mentioned, is the structural. So who is with the family and the type of communication they are. <laughs> this is important to know for nurses to care for patient families. And for that, we have instruments. Probably you, you already know the, these instruments and you have already drawn these instruments. So in the left side, we have the genogram, which is an instrument that was first used in the enterprise. So for factories um, and for directors of different uh, factories to identify 
who in their in their work um, was the family of the of the of the clients. But then in the late 80s, the genogram was moved to the health um, situation or to the health arena in psychology, in family therapy, in mental health. Uh, well, and now in many other situations, we use genogram in community nursing. It's a very interesting instrument to use. And so, as you can see here, this is a simple genogram, but it gives you uh, uh, an interesting information about who is the family, the, the patient, the caregiver, the, the children that this, uh, this uh, family has, the grandchildren, how is the communication, and you have this information in less than 30 seconds because if you have to read all the information in the writing paper, it will take you two minutes. However, the genogram is an instrument that gives you a visual panorama of the family. And also, it's a very interesting instrument to develop uh, the first therapeutic relationship with families. That's why it's one of the most popular for nurses uh, in practice. And then we have the ECOMAP, which is uh, uh, also an instrument that shows not the structure of the family, but how the family is related to the bigger community, um, such as, for example, in this William uh, uh, family, how uh, social friends are important, or how the church is important for the family, the extended family, the, the, the volunteer work. So again, it gives you a family context that is very useful when we care and we uh, for families and what is important for them in the community. So these are the main instruments that we use for the assessment. And once we have this assessment, we decide on what kind of intervention we are going to place, uh, to put in place with a specific family. And this is what we call the Calgary Family Intervention Model. Really the interventions, as I wrote here in the, in the PowerPoint, the aim is, again, according to the model framework, to promote and to strengthen the family, but in a specific levels. So the intervention aimed at the cognitive, affective, and behavioral arena or fields or levels. And I'm going to show you later what does it means. And at the end, with this intervention, what we want as a nurse is, as a nurse, well, yes, or as a health professional, to mobilize family resources in order to soften family suffer, in order to alleviate family suffering and to help the family to cope with the health problem, any kind of problem, or also to promote health. It is true that many times we focus on health problems, but the, this model, uh, uh, in addition to family nursing care, focus on health promotion and also on, on on health problems in both uh, situations. So the levels of these interventions, as I mentioned, are these three. Uh, let's, let's explain briefly what does it mean. So the cognitive level, which is the most, uh, or which is the one that nurses focus more, is it has the goal to change the way the family perceives a health problem so it can, they can discover new solutions. So it's having information of this, uh, about what is the disease about, how to, to act according to specific symptoms and how to manage a specific situation. So intervening in this cognitive level has the aim to change the way the family perceives because sometimes, and you may be, uh, you may agree with me, when uh, there is 
uh, family health problems, many times the family see this black hole and and uh, and she she doesn't know uh, how to see um, uh, or how to find solutions. So working on this cognitive level help to to the family to have a new vision and a new way of of challenging and, and managing the situation. Then is what we call the affective level which aim to help the family control the emotions that they have in order to, to have the ability to, to make decisions and to solve problems. Because we as person are, have, you know, psychosocial and emotional abilities. So working on this affective level had the nurse to change the control of emotions of families. And finally, the behavioral level is uh, aims to help families discover also new solutions that help them to easy or to promote um, or, or to alleviate their physical, emotional and spiritual suffering. Sometimes, especially in a chronic illness experience, families used to do the same uh, activities or let's put the example of a, a person with a dependent situation, a person with advanced dementia and the caregiver and the family. They used to have a systematic way of doing and sometimes losing their lives. Therefore, this behavioral intervention helped the families to solve the situation and to change the way they behave in a daily life. And I put this, uh, this attention that uh, I mentioned before, it is important to work and to intervene at the cognitive level, but this is uh, the focus that, or this is the, the, the area that we most focused in, in, nurse, in intervening. And it is important to assess the type of needs that this family have to intervene at the three levels. So some type of interventions are the, the following in the different area. The cognitive, which means commenting family strength. As I mentioned before, sometimes families do not identify their own strength about how to care, about how to deal with the situation, about how they communicate to try to, um, to, to live in a better way their situation. Offer information, both about the disease, about the health situation, about the uh, uh, health promotion situation. Really important. Mm -hmm. In the affective way, uh, Lauren Wright and Lehi, they mentioned these two specific interventions that consist of validating and normalizing emotional responses. And I put an example. Many times when um, when professional meet a family and they you know ex explore their problems um the we i will say we use because it's something that is is you know uh, uh, very usual we say okay don't worry this is normal don't worry everything will pass and i i say to my student please avoid this don't worry is it really important not to say don't worry but validate and say yes i know that you are suffering because of you know this new diagnosis of cancer and i understand that the family has been impacted by the situation so normalizing the family emotions and this is really therapeutic for families when i intervene in that way and in that way or when i I ask my students to go and practitioners to go to practice and use this intervention. When they come back, they say, Christina, it's amazing how uh, having this uh, normalization of emotion and working in this specific intervention with families help them to uh, cope with the situation and help them to, to, to create a therapeutic a relationship between the nurse and, and families. Also in the affective uh, intervention, 
it is important to encourage families to explain and to narrate their disease, how they are living with the situation, what is the most difficult part of these health problems, what they would like to change in, the, in, the, in their daily living. So promoting family narratives, and this is really, really, really important as well. And finally, in the behavioral part, two of the main interventions are encouraging uh, help and support for caregiver, particularly when we are talking about chronic illness and long-term conditions where um, usually family members care for a long time for their ill patient, ill family member. And so helping them to see different ways of caring or having support from other family members or extended family or even community sources is really important or encourage respite which is very much connected with the with the previous item so this is the type of interventions that of course in theory is difficult to explain it, it would be great to, to see doing a, like a practice uh, or a workshop um, to, to see how in simulation we work this type of situation or of intervention, sorry. Are you okay? Are you following me away? Yes. Okay, thank yes, you. Okay, so let's continue with this great tool that is part of the family assessment and intervention model. And is what we call the family interview. This instrument was developed in the Calgary unit in Canada in the, in the early 80s by Dr. Wright and, and her team. And uh, because they have this unit with uh, the Calgary unit in Canada uh, uh, was based and aimed to first educate practitioners to work with families, to do research and to see what helps families cope with the situation and also to practice with them because they have the families in the unit um, having this practice. And so, of course, when we have time and we have a consultation of one, more than one hour, we can develop this full and complete assessment items. But the reality, both in research and both in practice, is that time is insufficient. We have not enough time to, you know, to, to do a one-hour interview. And that's why the researchers develop what we call this 15-minute family interview or less. So in 15 minutes or less, you can identify the, 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 uh, the structure of the family, the communication, and the main issue the family is living at the moment of the, of the interview. So let's, uh, let's see what is this 15 minutes family interview about. Dr. Wright and Lehi, they, they uh, identify what they call the key ingredient to interview families in 15 minutes or less. And in these three uh, ingredients or items, there are the first one is what they call manners. So is, this is really important uh, to create the second point, which is the therapeutic conversation. So manners means how a nurse approach to a patient and a family how the nurse uh, introduced herself, uh, present the aim of the meeting, identify who is uh, the, the person uh, in front of her or, or him. So is the way that the nurse approached the family. And this is the first point, very important, because if, the, if these manners are not adequate, then the rest is really difficult to achieve. So having this attitude toward the families, open attitude, warm uh, manners helps to uh, conduct a therapeutic conversation. That means uh, to include the family members within the meeting, to invite them to ask questions, to describe their experiences, to recognize the family's ability 
to handle problems by asking them about their daily activities, about what are the main uh, challenges for them at the moment. At the end, to count on family members for joint decision making. So this therapeutic conversation is key uh, in the family interview, okay? The third of the ingredients are the use of genogram and ECOMAT as I previously explained. So the nurse have this instrument to approach the family, to ask them about who is who in the family, about who is the, who live in the same house, how is the relationship of, uh, and communication with their children or their grandchildren, etc. So the nurse draw a genogram in 15 minutes or less. Actually, you know, when we are skilled, you can do it in, in less than five minutes. And it's a great uh, instrument to create this therapeutic conversation, which at the same time helps to develop and to implement what we call the therapeutic questions. This type of questions are open questions that promote and um, to, to, this, to um, explore and intervene at the three levels that I mentioned before, the cognitive, the affective, and the behavioral levels. And this is the type of question that uh, could be a therapeutic question, like what is the biggest, the biggest challenge for you and your family right now? So an open question. Sometimes in practice, you know, we go and say, okay, you have to do that, 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 that without asking them, okay, can you let me know what are your main challenge at this moment? Because then you will, you will be direct to the needs of the families and then the satisfaction of this family and the nurse will increase really drastically. Another question can be, how can I be of help to you and your family during this interview? Or if there was one question that could be answered now, what would be? Sometimes they, ask, they answer, you know, the, the one question is that I don't know uh, about how to deal with the specific uh, treatment. Sometimes they will ask you, you know, I don't know about how to, or, or my main problem now is how to, to know, how to communicate to my husband that I'm dying. And, and he's suffering, uh, and I don't know how to do that. So at the, at the emotional level, well, it depends on the, each family. So that's why it's important to ask this question, what the, the author called the one-one question. So in one question, you have very important uh, responses. Or another question is, how have I been helpful to you and your family at this family meeting? How can... I improve for the next meeting that we have. And in this question, they usually uh, answer things like, uh, uh, what I have, feel, uh, I have felt, um, uh, you know, well with you because I can uh, communicate my worries or, well, any, anything that the family wants to share with you. So this is what they call the therapeutic question. And then the final ingredient is the commendation which means uh, identifying the family strength and resources. I have to say that all families have, have strength. So we have to identify them during this, this family meeting. And uh, the authors, right and left, he defined commendation as the following. By commending families' resources, skills, and strength, nurses offer the family members a new view of themselves. When nurses change families' view of themselves, then they are able to see their problem in a different way. And therefore, they can move toward more effective solution and they, they can alleviate their suffering in a real way. And this is really, really uh, a true in practice, okay? When we identify strength, um, such as, well, you, you know, the care you are providing to your family member is a real care. So your family member is, is really, uh, has a chance to have you as, as, as your spouse because you care yourself together. And uh, well, this kind of commendation that of course, 
each family has its unique uh, strength as, and so we had to identify within the family meeting. Okay, so this is the, 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 the main instrument, the family interview for this model and that is used in practice and also in research. So I hope that I, I gave you a, a short but global perspective of the, what the Calgary Family Assessment and Intervention Model is. And, and then I would like to share with you some experiences of implementing this, this model in different parts of the world. Of course, I know there are others, but this is what the, the one I know most. As, as you can see in my, in my presentation, I combine all the time research, practice and education because it's a circular process. Okay, so when we do research on family nursing, it helps us to practice or to put in practice some of the evidence that we found. And also when we do research, it impacts on education. Okay, so my research impact on my student education and at the same time, the education impact on practice. So it's a circular process. So in general, when, when we speak on family nursing, we speak on these three uh, arenas, research, practice and education. And I say that because as Duhamel, which is a, a, a very well-known author in family nursing, also from Calgary, um, uh, published this uh, article and others about how to translate knowledge into practice, she uh, also mentioned this circular, the importance of the circular process between science and practice. Because of course, research is not uh, about doing research to put, you know, in, uh, in there in, on the table and not put on the practice. We do research to ameliorate and to improve the way we care for, for our patients and families. So the circular process is really important. The translation of knowledge into practice or the translation of knowledge into education. In this way, the, the Calgary unit that I already presented you previously was the, the unit that promoted this model, the Calgary model, and promoting working with families in a systematic way. And the unit, I invite you to read this editorial, which is very short and, and give you an overview of what the family nursing unit did and what their, uh, its aim. Um, the unit was, uh, uh, was uh, developed in the early 80s, in 1982, and closed in 2007, not because it did not work, but because, well, uh, other issues such as, you know, professional and economic issues. But in any way, uh, we had the, her ambassador, Lauren Wright, and other colleagues from that have been showing uh, 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 the importance of family care around the world. Another experience of implementation of family nursing is uh, the one that we know in the Landspital University Hospital, Hospital in Iceland. This was a project conducted uh, in the in. 2010 or until now, well now it's, it's already implementing. And this is my colleague Erles Batorti and her team. Um, they did a great job about um, working university and the hospital together to implement this family focused approach and in the whole hospital. This is one of the, of the experiences worldwide more inclusive because it was not only in nursing but or in one unit but the project um, um, aim to implement family nursing in all units of the hospital in cancer in cardiovascular and so that's why all practitioners at the hospital were trained to focus on on family nursing and to provide family nursing care and here i i show you this 
uh, cards that when I visited the hospital, I had the chance to, to see how they work with families. I could see that all nurses in their pocket, they have this, this genogram, an ECOMAP card, and also with the different therapeutic questions here. It's in Icelandic. I don't know any Icelandic, but I, uh, because of the translation, uh, uh, these are the, the questions that I show you previously. And now there are in different hospitals, the genogram as in this picture. So from this Icelandic project, the results were great and we have many contributions. So these are some papers and some contributions from Iceland uh, showing the positive result derived from the projects in terms of including family uh, in care uh, including uh, or involving participation of families in cancer, in, in cardiovascular units, in mental health units. So I, I invite you to, if you want to get in depth, to, to read this, uh, these articles that show you how the implementation was conducted. And now I would like to, to let you know more about my experience in family nursing and the implementation of family nursing in Spain and how um, I try to, to implement from a pioneer way in the three areas, research, practice and education. So in my country and particularly in my university, uh, and in both universities in my area, in Pamplona. One thing that we started is, you know, when I did my PhD in Edinburgh, my PhD was on family nursing and my supervisor in the, in the I did it in 2002, I started my PhD and my supervisor was a family nurse uh, in Europe. So she was one of, of the family nurse in Europe, well known. So I, I had the privilege to work with her and she helped me to discover what family nursing was and how to, to promote family nursing in education. So when I came back to Spain, I wanted to implement this family nursing approach uh, as in my university. And so that's why I invited as you did it with me today, and, and again, I thank you for that. I invited Dr. Lauren Wright to come to my university and to give some courses on what is the Calgary Family Assessment, why it is important to, to, to care for families, etc. So we did have many courses, seminar, conferences. Uh, now we have thesis on family nursing, masters, etc. So in the education, part, we, we, we develop over the years different courses to uh, create an atmosphere and to a culture of family nursing. And so we included an elective course for the fourth year uh, of baccalaureate students, which was called the family as the unit of care. I have to say that they enjoy a lot. Uh, they were the, the last year of, of baccalaureate students. And actually now they, they always uh, want to choose this, this uh, course because they, they mm, explore more in depth how to work with families, how to, de to do genograms and how to care for families in different situations. So this was from an educational perspective. Of course, we also have invited over the years other colleagues from America, from Europe, given this different type of uh, class uh, master class, etc. Then we, 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 because we found it is, it was important to continue not only in, in education but in research. Our uh, research group had a focus on 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 this family system nursing and uh, and wanted to combine both the main issue in health research such as chronic illness, cancer. Uh, end of life and families. So our research group do research uh, on this type of topic, focusing on families as well. And now we have more, uh, the new generation of researchers also uh, are part of this group and, and continue doing research on, on this type of topics. 
And in this context, uh, well, we conducted in the late, uh, in 2050, uh, a research which was uh, granted at the national level. And I have to say you that it's not easy that nurses have money from grant at the national levels, but th they found really interesting our research on family nursing. And so we uh, conducted and did this research to, uh, to identify if an educational intervention for practitioners from Spanish practitioners based on the Calgary family nursing model was effective to help nurses work with families in different contexts. And I would like to briefly share with you some, uh, some results of this, of this project. Well, first, I have to say that there is little known on the effectiveness of family nursing education uh, intervention. And that's why at this moment we, we develop this, this research that aims to design, implement, and evaluate the effectiveness of the training intervention program based on the Calgary assessment and intervention model. So it was a randomized controlled trial with um, 61 nurses in, that were uh, recruited from the north, uh, from Navarra, which is the north of Spain here, where I, I'm from. And um, we started in this project with nurses in primary care in mental health and nursing homes because we found that they had more uh, opportunities to work in um, uh, with more time with families. So that's what we started in the community. And we uh, developed these two uh, interventional educational courses, one which lasted the interventional protocol 24 hours and was divided in six modules. So we, we teach and educate them about uh, why it is important to care for families, about the model and the different instruments and the intervention. And the control group, which was um, which has a duration of eight hours and only two modules, very general modules. So the, the primary outcomes was we wanted to identify if after the course, after the training, nurses were competent to provide family nursing care in terms of if they had more knowledge about family system nursing, uh, if they have more abilities and skills to, uh, to care for family nursing, to use the instruments, and if their attitude towards working with families was uh, more positive. Um, and so, well, we use different instruments for that, and we assess prior to the intervention, after the intervention, and six months later. And this was, well, these were the sociodemographic data that are already briefly mentioned to you. We have primary care nurses, we have uh, nursing home nurses and mental health. So the, the, the participants from the mental health was higher. And, and this shocked us, but this means that they were very interested to improve their ability and their competence to work with families. And these were the results. So uh, clearly the intervention was effective to um, to promote competencies in nurses to work with families. So 44.1% uh, of, of the participants acquired the competence uh, compared to the 59 uh, in the control group. Mm -hmm. Uh, so these results show that the educational intervention protocol was effective to prepare nurses to work in a competent way with families. Uh, I have to say that knowledge achievement was higher in the intervention group, probably because when they have more hours, they, they, they get more in depth in the what family system was. And also an interesting thing that we had a high attitude to family nursing in both group and since the beginning. Probably that's why they wanted to be part of this, uh, this, con this intervention because they wanted to, to know more about how to care for families. 
And an interesting thing is that the nurses show high skill to draw genograms. And they actually, after the course, I met some nurses in practice and they say, you, you know, Christina, I love this genogram instrument. I'm using it in practice in the community and it helps me a lot to know the picture of the family. So in, in synthesis, in conclusion, the, the, the intervention was very effective and significantly effective. And that's why now the group is, is doing, um, other colleagues are implementing uh, uh, family nursing at the hospital level, at the university hospital. So we are preparing the new generation of nurses uh, for family nursing and for family nursing care, also in Spain, I suppose. And I would know more than maybe in the discussion part, what are you doing and your experiences in, in, in terms of caring for families and research and family issues. And finally, I would like to, to share with you some of the challenges and opportunities to, to, to have this family approach and to, to implement family family nursing in the different contexts. I have to say that, uh, well, my understanding globally, uh, you know, in Australia, in Canada, uh, in Europe, in Latin America, in North America, uh, in Asia, in general, my understanding is that it is not easy to, to implement family nursing, mainly because Mm, health ser services are disease focused. Although in theory, we say that, you know, we work for the person or we have a person-centered care, we have a holistic uh, perspective of care, then the reality is, is, is quite different. We have to improve in that. Of course we have improved, but we, we have to continue improving to, to change and to move from the disease-focused healthcare system or, or disease-focused education to a more family or holistic uh, focused care. Also, another context is the lack of education on family nursing. I do have uh, experience that many universities and many nursing departments are implementing uh, courses in family nursing, but it's not in, uh, we still need more, more courses uh, throughout the curriculum and in different level, baccalaureate, uh, master level. And also there are scarce leadership role in family nursing. We need more leaders that can change this perspective and help move the implementation of, of family nursing. And something I think also uh, universal is that we have poor financial resources for research in family nursing, although now more and more uh, resources are, are, are given to, to do research on family nursing. So these are our challenges, as I mentioned. In practice, few nurses uh, use family nursing in a systematic way. And so that's why uh, I can say that Sometimes in some units, uh, family nurses is implemented, but not in others. So, so we can say that the model or the family nursing perspective has not been implemented in, in a systematic way yet. I say yet. I hope, I have the hope that in the future we will, will have more experiences. Of course, there is a need to translate the, what we know, the evidence we have about the, the impact and the effectiveness of research in practice. This is really important and this, uh, I can say this is our aim in the future years. And as I mentioned, the importance of uh, developing leadership because there are few chances to, to, to develop leadership and to occupy leadership roles at the hospital management level at, in the education to promote and implement family nursing. But who said I couldn't? You know, we, I, 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 I presented this panorama, this picture um, of challenges, but of course we have many opportunities. And as Florence Nightingale mentioned, she said that so never lose an opportunity 
of is urging a practical beginning, however small, for it is wonderful how often in such matters the mustard seed germinates and roots itself. And I really believe on that. We have to move on. I think a way to, to develop this implementation of family nursing is international collaboration as we are having today. So sharing experiences to empower people and groups for change, to see the barriers, what has worked for some and what not for others. So international collaboration for me is, is, is key, is a priority. Um, in family nursing, there are many experiences here. Of course, I, there are all more experiences that I presented here because these are the ones that I, I, I know most in depth and, and I am working with them. But I know here in Indonesia, you are doing a good job uh, about family nurses and educating and doing practice in Japan, in, in well, in the different parts of the, of the world. Thanks God, now family nursing is disseminated in many regions and countries. And in that way, uh, I would like to share with you um, uh, an initiative, a European initiative that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm part of it, and I'm very proud to be part of this initiative, which is the FAME group, what is called the Family Health in Europe group, where uh, it's a group that um, do research on health practices toward families of older patients living with chronic illness in Europe. And we are members from different European countries, such as Iceland, Finland, Denmark, you know, Switzerland, uh, the Netherlands, and, and me from Spain. So we are, you know, asking for grants at the European level to move this, this uh, practice of family nursing in Europe. So I invite you to do the same in, in your region. Of course, being part of international association as uh, uh, Mega, who is uh, an IFNA family member, or, and be part of committees help you to be part of a family and to know more about what is doing in the different uh, committee research practice. So I invite you to be part of this international association and to uh, work with other colleagues from different parts of the world in the different standing committees. Uh, also, I, I, uh, the opportunities, I think we have to continue teaching and educating the new generating of nurses through master class, such as the one we are having, through simulation and, and practice. This is important. So in simulation, practitioners and, and students can simulate and practice with families and see how to do this family interview the therapeutic conversation and how to have this debriefing and feedback from other colleagues and, and from family themselves about the care they provided. And um, also, I think it's an opportunity. Is it a challenge, the lack of leadership? But at the same time, I think it's an opportunity to, to invest in leadership, in education and research and practice to implement family nursing uh, in the different contexts at the university, at the nursing department, hospitals, and also in the research groups. And uh, I'm, I'm concluding the presentation and I would like to invite you to, to attend this family nursing conference, which uh, will be held in, in June 2021, is the International Family Nursing Association, uh, which I, I'm part of it, I'm part of the board, and, and I would like to invite you because it's a great opportunity um, to share experiences in different uh, uh, aspects, education, practice, and research. And you have until the end of October to present abstracts. So it would be great to have, maybe you have already sent it, but to, 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 to send abstract and to share with other international colleagues, uh, well, your experience about family nursing throughout the life course. And finally, my message is 
to implement family nursing, I think it is really important to think family. So when you have in your mind the importance of, of family and, and, and you have in your mind that when you care for families, the impact is bigger and the, the effect of intervention are bigger, uh, then uh, thinking family is, is implementing family nursing in, in the different uh, perspective, research, practice, and education. And this is, I show you this culture uh, of, the, of Norway, the Park Vigilan, uh, who, who represented the different stages of families and the different situation of families through school. I love it. When I was in the part, I was really happy to be within this family uh, sculpture. Uh, and this one is from Pamplona, the, which is called the family, represented by a Spanish sculpture. So I would like, oops, what's happened now? I don't know what's happened. Oh, because I, I, I don't know what happened. Let's see what did I do. Well, my um, I will try to to share again but because I don't know what happened. Implementing. We are at the end. Um, ah, okay, we are here. Okay, so we are at the end, and I wanted to again uh, after presented all this information about the implementation of family nursing, I would like to thank you very much uh, about your invitation. And of course, I'm happy to hear your question and to discuss uh, about you about this topic. Thank you again. And I'm happy to hear you now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Prusina, for the great presentation, and you spend your time effectively. <laughs> now it's the turn for the audience to ask the question, and we have uh, participants who want to directly ask to you. Hi, right. please. Uh, I can come, Katarina Guinda. You can uh, give your question directly to Dr. Prusina, please. Okay, thank you, Ibu Mega. Good morning, Dr. Christina. Uh, my name is Katarina Guinda. Uh, thank you for your great explanation and exposure about Calgary Family Assessment and Intervention Model. And I want to ask you some question. And as we know, then, and as I already learned about uh, Family Nursing Assessment Model, uh, there are many uh, models especially in family nursing assessment, for example, like family center nursing assessment, and then Maglaya family nursing assessment or family system stress, stressor and strength inventory. So uh, my question is, in, in what kind of situation or in what kind of uh, family situation, we better to use uh, this model, this model uh, Cal Calgary uh, assessment model. And then the second question in, is uh, can we if we if we decided to use this uh, model, uh, if we decided to use this Calgary family assessment model to assess the family, uh, can we combine it with other uh, with other uh, model or with other family nursing assessment model? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your interesting questions. Thank you, thank you. I think they are uh, very key questions um, because, uh, well, one in which circumstances uh, you ask uh, to use the, the Calgary model? Well, you can use in any circumstances. I mean, it has been implemented in the different nursing uh, arenas and units like a mental health, a chronic illness. Um, so it's a choice of you as practitioner, of you as researcher. You know, there is uh, at the end is um, is a theory, and as a theory, there are different theories in nursing. There are different theories in family nursing, as you you um, greatly mentioned. 
Um, so it is a choice of the person. I think the Calgary, or my, my view, or why I decided to use the Calgary model in education and in research, and also to promote that in practice is because probably is the one that has been most um, researched and, and used in practice by many, uh, many nurses from different parts of the world. Therefore, the evidence is um, uh, we have more contribution and more of evidence of the easy way of using it. Other models are great as well. But for example, for the, the Calgary model, I think that having this instrument of the family interview helped you to very easily implement the model. And uh, in many cases, um, some models in family nursing, but also in other type of uh, areas, the models uh, uh, are still in the theory, but are not implemented in, plan in practice. So there is not a translation of knowledge into practice. So that's why I, I, I like the Calgary model, but of course you can choose the, the, the one you prefer. And as answering your second question, uh, also of course you can combine different models. The triangulation of models is also very interesting in both education, in both research and in practice. At the end is what, uh, at the end is to think the type of model that will help you, you as a nurse, as your perspective of seeing the family uh, or the perspective of doing research, how will help you the most to, to, to contribute to your research or your practice. So to both questions, yes, you can use in any circumstances and yes, you can combine your, your models, yes. Yeah, thank you. Mega, we cannot hear you because your microphone is off. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, now we have a uh, questions from uh, Rahmat Julian though. We can read in the chat room. Uh, he asks how to combine the model of family nursing and implement the model with the family on local wisdom. For, expert, uh, for uh, example, families on Indonesia with many cultures. We have so many cultures here and uh, Islamic religions. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can answer this. Okay, thank you again for the question. I, I, I am uh, learning a lot and I think this question is also really, really interesting. The, 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 the importance of the model or the specificity of the model is that it allows the person, the nurse, the researcher to, uh, uh, to adequate the intervention to each family. So that's why it is so important to assess the family and to see what are their beliefs, their way of living, their way of thinking, of, of managing the situation, independently of the religion, independently of the type of structure of family, independently of, of the religion of the family. So uh, each family is unique. And, and that's why we say the art of nursing, because as nurses, we have to assess the specific needs a family has. And, and the, the assessment model helps you precisely to identify what is important for this family or what is the most important challenges for this family to accomplish. And the model helps you to explore uh, um, the, 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 the family experience a narrative of a health situation, and it helps you to intervene with the specific needs of the family. So it doesn't matter the type of uh, culture that the family has. That actually, that's why one of the items in the family assessment is religion and the culture, because of course the culture has an impact on the way 
we believe, on the way we cope with the uh, with, uh, situation. And that's why it's important that the nurse explore this, these experiences. Um, then I invite you to implement in your local uh, unit or uh, or, yeah, or to start, probably uh, I'm sure that many of you have already experiences of implementation. Maybe you can you, you can share with, with me and with the rest of the audience um, what type of inter intervention you, you did. Another thing it's important to, to point out is, as I mentioned in the presentation, is don't be afraid because you know the assessment is so big. You don't need to do everything. You sometimes only knowing or even only asking therapeutic question to the family about, please let me, I would like to, to know more about your family. Please let me know what is the most, the, the, the most important challenge for you now, or who is suffering the most in your family? Just asking this question will help you to create a relationship with the family. And, and these are what we call intervention questions. The fact that we ask this question help the family to move, uh, to mobilize resources because uh, they, they help them to think, okay, I didn't, I, I never thought about this. Or, you know, when I ask sometimes families, well, let me know, do you know what is the suffering of, of your spouse? Did, uh, did he um, share with you the main concern? And sometimes they say no. So maybe this is the time. Let's see how you feel, both of you. So it's a, a way of creating the atmosphere for therapeutic conversation. So answering your question, yes, please. In any circumstances and local situation, you can implement part of uh, one intervention or the whole intervention. Okay, thank you for the answer. Uh, I, I acknowledge that, sure. Do you want to uh, ask some questions? Hello, you heard me? Yeah, 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 please. Hello? Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, th thank you so much, Dr. Mega. Thank you. And thank you so much, Dr. Christina, for your uh, lecturer. Uh, actually, uh, Dr. Christina, I came from Palestine. And you know that um, Arab culture, little bit, uh, is different from Europe culture, in meaning that the family are more uh, extended than nuclear, but now uh, we hear about that the family changed to, to become more nuclear than extended family. So how can we um, uh, move with family nursing to, to be parallel with the changes that, that, to, that occur uh, regarding to the family? And um, this is one, one question. And another question that, when I, when I learn nursing in bachelor, we learn through community nursing and there is public health nursing. So it's meaning in that it should be another specialties like family, uh, family nursing is another specialties or how can I integrate it family nursing with community nursing or public health nursing? And uh, because sometimes it's difficult or, um, to find in curriculum, like a specialist for family nursing. So how can we combine family nursing with community health nursing or public health nursing? Thank you so much. Well, thank you to you. Thank you for your excellent question. Um, I share with you the, the experience of the, the, the Mm, the change of structure of families, because in Spain it happens similar to to your to you in your place. You know we have this more extended uh, family, and now we are moving to more. Well, now we have more nuclear families, and now we have different type of families. Okay, so uh, we are moving over the years to different structure and type of families. Well, not only in Spain but in Europe. And then this is a reality. 
So how to, to do family nursing with this new uh, situation or this new structure of families? Again, it doesn't matter the type of structure uh, that a family has because family nursing gives the specific uh, care for the specific needs of the, of the family. Therefore, if now you have more a nuclear family or you are moving from an extended family to a nuclear family, remember the, the definition uh, uh, with which I presented, I started this presentation, the family is who they say they are. Therefore, when, as a nurse, when I'm in front of a family, the first question I have to say is who is, in the, who, is who in the family? And, and then the patient and the rest of the family will define themselves who is the family or those who are closer or are important for this specific health situation. So uh, it doesn't matter the type of structure, of course, uh, I, I, I finished the sentence. It doesn't matter the type of, of, of structure, if it is extended family, nuclear family, mononuclear, or different type of families to practice family nursing. Because you, you do have to practice with the unit you have in front of you and asking questions to them. So as nurses, we don't have to have like our... Uh, our perspective of what is a family, but we have to work with this broader view of the family is who they say they are. Sometimes I say that to the student and they, and they, they, they slow, they, they say, mama mia, but I, I interview a family and I ask, and I ask the person, who is who in the family? And for the patient, his dog was part of the family members. And he considered his dog as, you know, a, a key a support to deal with the situation. So uh, and as a nurse, I, 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 I cannot, you know, prejudice or judge the situation. Okay, that's, that's fine. I know it is important for them. So I have to consider uh, um, what uh, it's important for the family I have in front of me. And then an interesting uh, question about speciality. Family nursing uh, speciality is, is not worldwide. So in some countries, there are family nursing specialities such as in North America, for example, in Spain, we call family and community speciality, nurse, uh, family and community nurse speciality. But in many countries, Mm, there is no specific speciality of family nursing. I think the perspective of family nursing is, uh, or this is uh, what I try to, to express, is it's a way of caring. Of course, you need knowledge to care for families and for a group, but you can implement in all the settings, in the community, public health, at home, at hospital, Probably at hospital, you don't have so much time to, you know, to do the whole assessment at hospital, in nursing home. So it's a way of caring. It's a way of, of seeing uh, illness and health. Uh, since my understanding and family nursing understanding is that illness is a family affair, that, because it's not only the patient who is diagnosed with a physical uh, problem, but a diagnosis, any kind of diagnosis, this is diagnosis impacts on the whole family in terms of emotional impact, in terms of economic impact, in terms of family dynamics and change of roles. Therefore, this happens in the different context. So I, I invite you to, to implement this focus, let's say this approach of family nursing in the different contexts, including public and community health. In Europe, we do not have a, a, a specialty in family nursing, like fam the family nurse, uh, the, the family nurse, yeah. As I mentioned in Spain, we have 
kind of a family nurse, but in the different European country, we do not have this, this role. That's why in our European group, we are trying to show the impact of changing the focus independently of the kind of nurse you are. If you are an intensivist nurse, if you are a mental health nurse, if you are a community nurse, any kind of nurse or role can implement this family nursing approach. Another thing is the speciality and having more knowledge and, and speciality. Maybe in the future, we will have the opportunity to develop in different countries uh, this specific role. But meantime, let's move and implement family nursing in the different contexts. Okay, thank you for the great uh, answer. I hope that uh, Suro can get the point for these questions. And we have questions from Kalista Ayu. She is our uh, student in bachelor. And she asks uh, how to make family accept and interested in our family nursing interventions if they still think it is not very important for them. So I want to describe that family nursing is not uh, uh, popular in this in Indonesia. So they don't familiar with what uh, what is family nursing. So and see uh, tell about because in Indonesia I think a lot of families still don't pay attention to some of health pro program, but uh, they still focus on uh, cure the disease or the family disease if they already affected. So they don't have any concern how to prevent disease and something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you respond you. for this question? Yes, thank you, Menga, for the explanation. Uh, and thank you, my colleague students from the question. Um, well, you know, I think this is a universal um, response. Like, like uh, um, what I mean is families are not used to be asked, how do you feel about that? Because the system, as we mentioned previously, is focused on disease and on cure. Therefore, because I'm not the patient, I'm not diagnosed with a disease, I cannot say anything. I cannot say that I feel emotionally impacted. I cannot say that I don't know how to cope. So my experience with families also is the same uh, at hospitals. When you ask the families, you know, please let me know, how are you feeling? How can I be of health to you, to the patient? The first reaction is, I'm not the patient, he is the patient. I said, yeah, yeah, I know that he or she is the patient, but I'm interested about what you are living, how you are living this experience, because you know, you have an impact on the patient, on your spouse, on your daughter, and your daughter has an impact on you. So this is the first reaction when we ask and when we do research also, when we ask the family members, you know, they are shocked that the person is asking them about what they are feeling or how we can be of help for them. I remember when I interview a family with uh, cancer and I interviewed the patient uh, first and then the one family member and in particular it was the, the daughter of this cancer patient and when I asked them please let me know how, how are you dealing how do you feel with this situation she started crying and crying and crying and I say well I, I recognize that she was suffering because of her mom cancer diagnosis uh, uh, it was the second diagnosis so she has a relapse and so she said you know it is the first time that a professional asked me how I feel. And so I'm shocked and, and I'm, I'm crying because I have the opportunity to share how I feel and I am terrified with the situation. I don't know how to help my mom. I don't know how to communicate her mom, with my mom. So this is the first reaction. I think it's a, a universal. Probably in some cultures, Probably your culture is, is, is more highlighted because uh, family nursing is not so usual. But let's start saying that this is something uh, in, in usual that happens. However, when we start working with the patient 
as a person, as a psychosocial person and the family, then it creates a relationship between the nurse and this family and satisfaction with care is fantastic. In addition that me as a nurse is helping the, the, this family move on with the situation, it has the power, family nursing has the power to create this, this therapeutic relationship uh, with, the, with the client, in this case, the family. Uh, and uh, usually they, they will never forget you because they say, you know, this nurse came and she, she did not only put my treatment, but she asked me how I was dealing with that. She asked my mom what uh, she was dealing. And so, yeah, satisfaction is really, really high. And then we promote what we call holistic care holistic care based on living with the, with the health situation. As nurses, our aim is not to cure, is to care. And caring implies well-being on the individual and on the group. So I invite you, students, I don't remember your name, but I invite you to do that in practice, to ask uh, the family, how can I be of help to you to do this practice? I usually ask my, my students to, when they go to do their practice in, in the different units, to apply this, um, this type of questions. Let me know, how can I be of help? Or, uh, you know, if you have, you know, some uh, relationship with the, with the family in, in the hospital units, after a while asking that, who is suffering the most in the family. Of course, these are cultural aspects, but I invite you to, to, to start doing this type of question and you will see that the family will open to you and you will be more satisfied as a nurse because you will care for the person. Okay, so we can use these uh, situations, uh, this challenge, and we use uh, as opportunity to respond to the situation rather than rather than we see as a, a barrier to have communication with the family. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and next we have a questions. Maybe this is the last question because we have so many questions here. Um, question from Abdullah Azza Mustajab. Uh, he is uh, one of master student in community nursing. Okay. And he, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He asks about what is the difference between Calgary model with the other models that you mentioned before. We have Friedman, McGill, mm -hmm. and WHO. And maybe you can explain. In your experience, do you have uh, experience with the weakness of this model? Maybe the weaknesses you ask yeah. me. Yeah, maybe we get, we get the point, the strengths of this model. This is the power. Yes. Form. Maybe you yes. have experience about some weakness of this model. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, all models have weaknesses. Yeah. Of course. My belief and, and, and weaknesses and advantages, all models uh, in family nursing and in the rest of uh, models in nursing. So I... I um, I haven't worked with the other models in depth. I have read some, uh, for example, the Magill model based on the strength model, also very much used in practice um, by my colleague Lawrence uh, from Canada. Um, I know that in some part of Canada, they are using in a region, uh, the model of Magill and, and the strength based family nursing model. Uh, again, I, I haven't worked with them, Probably because I, I choose the, the Calgary one first because uh, I, I, I really uh, study the, the, in, in a great de uh, greater depth the model. But my view on the weakness of Calgary is that uh, is, is too extensive for the assessment. And of course, in practice, this is impossible, as I mentioned before. And then, for example, there are some items in the Calgary assessment models that depending on the culture is not appropriate to ask. For example, about what kind of religion you have, about um, other specific aspect that uh, it should be adapted to the culture. For example, in Spain, I will not ask this type of question. So I choose from the model, the items that I think are, are important to include. 
so I think this is a weaknesses, the, 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 the model uh, which is really vast. In relation to the intervention, uh, I think the, fam the 15 minutes family intervention is a great instrument to be to put in place very quickly and easily. Uh, the, it's not a weakness as such, but it's a need of being educated to do that. Because um, you, in addition to have knowledge, we have to, to apply the skills. And so that's so important to, to, to simulate that with students, to, to uh, video recording them and to see, can you see the type of questions you ask? Can you see the reaction of families with your questions? So, um, so it's, uh, it's not a weakness, but there is a need to promote education in order that uh, nurses are competent to, to practice this kind of intervention. But yeah, I would say the, the, the different items, in, specifically in the assessment um, part, that are not appropriate for some cultures. And so nurses require to prioritize and identify the type of items that she or he want to implement. Thank you for the uh, answer. And maybe one more question. So we have okay. so many questions. I'm so happy to answer any <laughs> question. Okay. Uh, this is uh, from Hani Rasni. Uh, this is my, my college. Uh, this uh, she asks in Indonesia, but I try to translate it. Because of this pandemic situations, uh, now we have uh, like uh, online study. Hello? Yes. Okay, you can hear me. Okay, now we are in the pandemic situation, right? Mm -hmm. So many of family uh, have, uh, have experience with online school with their children now and and uh, the parents the parents of feel have uh, have burdens double burdens sure. yeah burden because yeah. uh one of the uh, family a burden and one academic burdens totally <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you have any suggestions to uh, have our intervention for these situations to facilitate uh, the parents for the situation. Okay, I, I completely understand your colleague. <laughs> I think this is a universal experience, you know, combining uh, work and family at the same time. And I have to say that nowadays work is, is uh, we have more workload in, in education because of the pandemic. So first, the pandemic has had a, an impact in family suffering worldwide we could see you know the well the high incidence of mortality in in many families especially elderly patients so this um, suffering has been really really clear for families uh, i don't know in your region i suppose it's the same but for example i can uh, share with you my experience in spain uh, during the the, the very uh, like uh, key part of the pandemic in May, especially in Spain, April, May, many elderly died, they died alone, and they, they couldn't do the funerals. And for example, this was really important for family, they couldn't say bye bye and goodbye to their uh, ill member or to their family member. And this is having an impact now on, on the emotional level. So for sure, this pandemic has a, is a family Affair. And actually, we wrote uh, an editorial, my colleagues from the European uh, group, on, on the COVID 19 and family impact, saying in a synthesis what I mentioned the impact of the pandemic on, on increasing family suffering worldwide. So, saying that and saying, uh, and I don't know if I, fa I have a clear act, uh, qu uh, question or a clear response for how to combine family and work at the same time. I know it's, it's, it's very hard um, to, yeah, to, to, to work at home in education and to care at the same time with fam for families. I think an important uh, strategy may be that to um, 
continue with uh, daily uh, uh, activities like for example the child did you have to you know to do the exercise or to, you have to attend a, a conference in the school do it uh, um, so to separate the family life and the work uh, part because I think what is happening now, and I was talking with my colleague, one colleague from Brazil, he was telling me, Christina, you know, I, I cannot see the, 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 the difference now between family life and work life because everything is together. And this is, this is something universal again. So my recommendation, if I could say something, is like to try to separate uh, these two different type, family life and work life. So if I have my time, I work my time and then I leave, I close my computer and, and pay attention to my, to my family. But it, this is something that we may need to research in the future, the impact of pandemic on mental health of families uh, and, and workers. That's true. Yeah, it's interesting topic, I think. <laughs> okay, uh, because now it's 3 p.m. in Indonesia, uh, I think it's enough for our uh, lecture today. And thank you so much for the great knowledge today. And I hope that the Kalkari model can be implemented also in Indonesia. And then uh, many, I hope that we can discuss some questions can be delivered by email and you can answer and we can provide to the uh, audience. Okay, okay, yes, no okay. problem. Yes, okay. thank you so, very much uh, and uh, for the great question, for the invitation. And I would love to be there, but because of the pandemic it's not possible. And okay. I see you tomorrow with this Grandi Theory session and research. Okay, thank you. And this is... Uh, the end of the sessions and uh, again thank you so much for the valuable knowledge today i hope you can inspire us to the practice of family nursing in indonesia particularly and uh, i will give time back to the master of ceremony Ibdian yuli please yeah yes thank you very much uh this is Maga. yeah i think the material is very interesting as the conclusion said that the educational intervention protocol based on family nursing was effective through to prepare nurse to work with their competence. Maybe this will be effective also in community mental health nursing as well, as we know that family have very important role in carrying the psychiatric patient. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, this is because I concern in psychiatric nursing, so I, I do relate it with psychiatric area. And I do believe that we have to think about the family, being empathy to the family, and we will know that they have many needs to be fulfilled. Yeah, uh, yeah maybe that's what I think. Uh, and then, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the end of the first day even of general lecture with the time nursing theory application hosted by Nursing Department Faculty of Medicine, Universitas Diponegoro. I would like to remind you all that uh, tomorrow is the second day of our program and the topic will be grounded theory in nursing research like uh, Dr. Christina said. Uh, so we will be waiting for you all to join the virtual general lecture with the link shared by the committee. Uh, on behalf of the host and the committee, we would like to extend once again our deepest appreciation to you all for your participation, especially for, to Dr. Christina Garcia Vivar. We wish you safe and healthy with stay at home. Thank you and good afternoon. Marilah kita akhiri acara kita pada hari ini dengan membaca hamdalah bersama. Alhamdulillahirobbilalamin. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank <laughs> you.
Terima kasih semuanya. Ya. Oke, okay. makasih. Terima kasih. Terima, kasih. Terima kasih semuanya. Mohon maaf kalau nggak semua terjawab ya. Pertanyaannya banyak. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Don't forget for tomorrow. Just coming again. Okay, yes. insyaallah, insyaallah. Yes. See and don't tomorrow. forget for the the last attendant list that you need to fill in for the certificate. <laughs> Terima kasih semuanya. Terima kasih Lip dulu ya, Matanun. Pak Badan, sorry nanti saya catkan itu ya, jawab pertanyaannya ke Pak itu ya, Dokter Kristina ya. Ya, ya lah Bapak Ibu. Saya sudah menutup pertanyaannya. Ya, ya, ya. Ya, Matanun itu. Ya.